So bank reconciliation is prepared periodically to explain the difference between cash on the bank statement and cash on the company's books. And because of accrual based accounting and our definition of cash, there's going to be a difference. And so we have a like literally you'll get a bank statement for the company might say, hey, the bank, uh, the bank has in the bank, we have a million bucks at the end of the year. But on our books in our accounting system, we might have 1.2 million. And we didn't see, hey, why are these different? And make sure we both reconcile. And so we'll make a third form that explains why these two are different in order to make sure our accounting system is correct. And so from the bank balance standpoint, we'll, we'll look at, hey, here's all, everything we've added to our bank statement. Here's everything re we've reduced and here's our balance. And, our, and then in our book, we have all the cash we've received and all the cash we've paid in our balance. And then we'll have to reconcile both so that they tie. And so from the bank statement, we need to add or deduct any errors we see. So we review the bank statement for errors or any timing differences. So we might know that we've received a check and we cash, we put it in the bank, but the bank hasn't processed it yet. So we'll have to add that to the bank statement. For the book balances, we'll have to adjust any errors or any other time differences on our books. Maybe we wrote a check, but we know that hasn't been reflected in the bank yet. We'll adjust it on our books. So this is, you're gonna have to memorize this and it's not fun. I'm sorry, like it's just, it's just science, the science behind the bank reconciliation process. You need to memorize it sooner rather than later. Um, it's just an important piece of accounting to know. Like if you run your own business, if you're doing your own finances, you just need to understand it. So our cash balance per our bank, plus any deposits that were owed, right? Anything that we like check we've received or something in transit that hasn't hit our bank statement yet, less any checks we've written out, and, any, and adjusted for any errors is our adjusted cash balance. Simple, right? At the end of the day, it's, hey, our, on our bank statement, at the end of the year, we might have some money still coming to us that we know we're like legally owed, we just hasn't hit the bank yet. And we might have written some checks that we know we've legally paid, hasn't hit the bank yet. And we might see some errors and we just adjust it. And that's the correct cash balance. On our books, we, need to add in any collections we expect or we are or, or, or interest like accrued interest and we need to subtract any uncollectible items like any bad debts and then adjust any errors and then these should agree at the end we should do a reconciliation at the end to make sure they agreed and we'll make an adjusting entry to make sure it ties to the the and agrees to the bank statement and we'll go through some of these examples but the whole goal here right is Think about how tricky we can get from a business. And I try to say this because this keeps it more interesting. But from a business standpoint, I could really cause some issues here, uh, right? I could, let's say I want to give a financial statement to investors. Let's say I, my consulting company makes a million a year and I want to sell it. And so I want to tell everyone I had a million dollars in my bank account at the end of December. But I wrote a check on December 31st for a million dollars for a lawsuit I have. I don't tell anyone about. Or, or maybe I write the check to myself. I want to pay myself a million bucks. But on the bank statement, I mean, on my financial statements, I don't want to report that. Well, I can't get away with that because of this reconciliation process. I wrote a check, right? I wrote a check, so I'd have to reduce it from the bank statement. Even on the bank statement, though it shows I have a million dollars, we know that I have to adjust it because I wrote a check. Right? If I didn't adjust it, it would misrepresent what's in business actually has at the end of the year. So this bank reconciliation process is a little lengthy and it's gonna, I, I wanna spend a little time on it and do it in Excel. So let's take a quick break and then we'll, we'll meet back at 10 or five and then we'll go over the reconciliation process. Any questions? Question is, uh, let me pause the recording. So this bank reconciliation, I, you all need to know how to do this example. This is where your homework is gonna be focused off of and one of the key takeaways. So bank statement, balance, all right, we have our bank and then we have our book. Book. Book balance. By book, we mean our financial statements, right? Our accounting records. We need to make sure they both agree. 
So here we might get, I'll just call it bank statement. How do you write this? Also known as the books. So what's our balance on both? We both have a starting balance. Balance here, we're saying it's 2050. And on our books and our accounting records, it's 1,405. Oh, you not see my screen? Do you all see my screen? No. Oh, OK. Yeah. No. Thanks for pointing out. Can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. OK, cool, cool. Thank you. So we see here our bank statement and our books, our balances are different. Why are the balances different? It's because of what we talked about, right? We talked about how we might have checks in transit, deposits in transit, we might have errors. So we need to adjust both. We'll start with the bank statement. So here, we'll, what, what do we add? We might add deposit in transit. And we, what are we gonna deduct? We'll deduct any outstanding checks. So here's 150, 100. This will be this plus there. And then we get an adjusted bank balance. This looks easy the way I'm presenting it, but the way you'll get it, the question is it'll be a paragraph form of here's your balance for the bank, here's your balance for the book, here's the series of transactions, a deposit, outstanding checks. Uh, errors, et cetera, et cetera. And then you'll need to make sure you be, are able to make this form. So that's that's how it should be laid out. And I'm sure we'll go through an example in a second. Adjusted bank balance of 1,845. So we know based on the bank, we should have 1,845. We know this is our right answer. This should also be our adjusted books balance. So if something's wrong, if we're comfortable knowing the bank side, we should be able to get to the book side as well. What do we add from books? Well, books it said hey we collected a $500 note that's a $15 fee and so that's 485 that isn't in our accounting records and we also have interest earned right what's interest earned that's an accrual what are our adjusting entries right 493 plus our their total, that's where they're getting the 1898 from, is from adding these three components. What do we deduct? We'll deduct. We have a check printing charge from the bank, an NSF check plus service fee. That means that we have a service fee for a check that bounced. 23, 30, so we can subtract this minus this minus these two, and it should agree. If these two don't agree, so I'll, we can make a formula here that says if it equals, it's true, then we probably have the right answer. Right? If it doesn't agree, if I actually only got 1850, it says false, it's probably the wrong answer. Right? These two, the adjusted bank balance and the adjusted book balance, need to agree always, 100%. Because this is then what we're adjusting on our financial statements. So this just walks through those examples. And then afterwards, see this in more detail, we then need to make an adjustment to our books to make match the uh, adjusted balance sheet, right? So what are our journal entries here? Our journal entries are as follows based on these transactions. First, we need cash, so J, AJEs, AJEs, adjusting journal entries, right? AJEs, cash, collection expense, and notes receivable. So these aren't on our books. All of these transactions need to be adjusted through journal entries to change our accounting records. So we knew we debit cash, cash is a debit normal balance, it's an asset. It'll increase with 485. Collection expense is the 15 in this note. And our notes receivable. We should have had a notes receivable on our balance sheet for 500 that we've now collected. That's AJ number one. We need to do an adjusting journal entry. 
our interest revenue is eight here. Right? That's an entry at the end of the period for cash we haven't collected yet. And for miscellaneous expenses for the check recording fee. We'd have to get cash out. We credit the cash because we spent the money. And the last piece, the accounts receivable. We'd open that accounts receivable back up because this check bounced. Right? NSF check means the check bounced. We, we try to cash a check and it didn't go through. And then we'd reduce our cash by that amount. So all these adjusting entries will make our books tie to the bank statement. So that's the whole goal. It won't tie to the original bank statement because that needs adjustments as well. So that's why we need to do this first, the reconciliation process, the bank reconciliation, and then we do journal entries to make it tie to the adjusted bank balance. Does that process make sense? So there's three pieces going on. And this is what we'll always be doing in accounting. There's always the source document, the bank statement, our records, our accounting records, and then we might need to make adjustments to reconcile the two. And then we'll make entries to make sure that our book ties to our adjusted source document. Any questions here? 